Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Holy Ghost, take over from here. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So when you read from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, from verse 1 to 10, God spoke to prophet Jeremiah from Jeremiah, chapter 18, from verse 1 to 10, indicating that he has the power of choice to determine whatever he wants to do with the children of Israel. And he took him to the potter's house to see how the potter breaks down the clay the previous vessel and remold it. And so tonight the Lord is going to remold you and make you more than ever before what he so desires in the powerful name of Jesus. And the Spirit of God spoke to me tonight that he is doing a spiritual upgrade and that's powerful, that's awesome. Glory to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. And so the Holy Ghost spoke to me that tonight is doing spiritual upgrading and i'm grateful to god because all of you are going to be upgraded in the spirit in the name of jesus because the strength of israel will not lie and so we are speaking from the book of jeremiah we are the lord opened the eye of the prophet as to the situation of the children of israel and he said he is determined to upgrade the children of israel from what they used to be to what he desires them to be Thank you, Lord. So as we follow the Holy Spirit in this upgrading service, follow me quickly to the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, note the word the gift, it is a gift. Even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we are all custodians of certain graces of God. Jesus, global ecclesia, you know by now the meaning and the explanation and the mystery of grace. You know by now that grace is the manifestation of the strength of God through a man to accomplish the will of God, directly or indirectly. And you know that grace is the job of the Holy Ghost, is the strength of God, is the unction. Is the power of God made manifest through the angelic ministry unto us. And when the Bible says we are all giving measures of grace, it means there are certain assistances of the angelic ministry that you enjoy based on the choice of the Holy Ghost. So we are all what we have because of the grace of God. No one of us is anything without grace. This is part three on the subject title that we've been considering on understanding the biblical concept of spiritual fatherhood, mentorship, and spiritual sonship and mentee, according to the scripture. And the Holy Ghost decided in his mercy tonight to upgrade us. John chapter three, verse 27, John answered and said, A man cannot receive anything unless he be given him from above. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Amplified version says, A man can receive nothing, he can claim nothing at all, unless it has been granted to him from heaven. For there is no other source, Father, than the sovereign will of God. So, this is Jesus Global Ecclesia, and I am Apostle Ambassador David Longe, the lead pastor of Jesus Global Ecclesia. With my blessed gift of God in my wife, the prudent wife, that the Lord has gifted into my life. Together we are mandated by God to raise for him a army of, an army of a holy nation with the wisdom and the power of God to subdue the devil and enforce the will of God in every phase of human endeavor of which the Holy Ghost defined to me to be five. And those fives are in political and public administration, in professional, and career excellence in business innovation and entrepreneurship and to raise every woman to walk in the consciousness and be empowered as custodians of the destinies of their children and that of their us respective husband and to raise for him the frontline soldiers of christ in the fivefold ministry and supportive ministry while fostering the unity of the body of christ and accelerating the return of jesus christ and occupying for God in every phase of human endeavor because the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms 
of our God and of his Christ, and we shall reign forever in Jesus' name. And hence, Jesus' global ecclesia. And this is the reason why you are privileged to be hearing this gospel today, and your life shall be upgraded in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord. So we are all what we are by the grace of God, by the election of grace. No one of us is living our life according to the word of God. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, the Bible says that we were dead with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. God has quickened us together with him in resurrection. And we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Our life is hid in Christ in God. And as a result of that, we no longer live or Christ now lives his life through us. It is no longer us that live, but Christ lives through us. And so the life we now live, we live by the faith, the ultimate desire of Jesus Christ that he wants to see done. Having won the kingdom of this world back to God and himself and deliver it to us to enforce, that's why we are giving graces. That's why we are sent into these vessels. Jesus is using this vessel to accomplish his will on earth and to do that he had to release unto each one of us certain gifts that are called graces and these gifts and graces are the manifestation of the will of god in the manifestation and assistances of angelic ministry are you getting the word of god romans 11 verse 5 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the nation of America. And now for, for some days, the Holy Ghost has been speaking to me and I'm negotiating with the Lord over the nation of America. I keep seeing America on a news weeping. And the Lord said he is going to punish America. But I'm standing in the gap and I'm soliciting that you stand in the gap with me. That the Lord, if you find 10 righteous men in America, would you still punish them? Zalika Prabazaboski and the Busto Pradia. He is compassionate. He told me America is my son, is my is my child, and I'm disciplining America as a child. Don't you discipline your own child? I said, Lord, I do. But Lord, in the multitude of your tender mercies, have mercy on the nation of America. And so if you have the life of God in you, lift up your voice from time to time for the nation of America. We can power with God on our news and tender judgment with mercy, Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus. Well, as it stands right now, the, the Father is still on his point, but we can prevail with him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right, Romans 11 verse 5, even so that at this present time also, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. We are, we are not living our life. I've taught us over the last two days that there is only one Father in the universe, the Father of Spirit, the only one that is the source of all things. And anyone fathering, anyone husbanding, physically, biologically, and anyone fathering, mentoring, and doing anything in Christ, we are all doing it based on the grace of God. It is not us that does those things, it is God that works in us. And that's why he said it is he that walketh in us, meaning it's the one walking through us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He said, faithful is he that calleth thee who also will do it. So whatever we do, we do in the name of the Lord and we do for the Lord. In fact, he created all this for himself, by himself, for himself, to his glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We have 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Apostle Paul declared, I am what I am by the grace of God. You are what you are. You are what you will ever become in Christ. Only by grace. Jesus went forward again and said, For without me, you can do nothing. You can do one thing without the help of God. It is called nothing. Say with me, say nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How and why is it so? We have one Lord who is the Lord of all and is made the head of the church, the ecclesia, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. God has put all things under the feet of Jesus and gave him to be the head over all things to the ecclesia. So the unquestionable authority to the ecclesia, to the church. No singular believer, no singular believer in Christ have a life to live. We are not living our life. We are living for him. 
we do only what he says. If you are not that kind of a Christian, you are not useful to the Lord. That's why he says marriage is a model. It's an example of the relationship between Christ and the ecclesia. And that's why women are commanded according to the gospel. And according to my gospel, there is no other instruction greater than a wife than to be in subjection to her own husband, than for a child to be in subjection to her to his or her father, because the father and the husband are under the authority of Christ, who is the head of all things, the master of the universe. And today, I already showed you two days ago how God the Father is administering his fatherhood through the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost now chooses vessels through whom he fathers us spiritually, through whom he fathers us spiritually, mentors us spiritually, pastors us spiritually, covers us spiritually. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And that's why you see First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit, of the Holy Ghost, is given. You see, again, it's a gift. You didn't choose the gift God will use you for, because it's not your life. You are a part of the body of Christ, and you cannot, as a hand, say you want to do the job of the head. Neither can you say as a nose, you want to do the job of the mouth. We all have our unique responsibility in Christ, and that's how God has set some in the church. And so you need to identify who you are in the body of Christ and know where God wants you to function, whether in business, in politics, in career, or whether in ministry, fivefold ministry, even though all of us are in ministry because we are all serving the purpose of God in our different destiny. So if you are called into business, you are not the one doing the business. It is Jesus doing the business through you. If you are called into political and public administration, it's not you doing it. It is Jesus who chose to do it because he is the ruler among the nations. He wants to, the kingdom belongs to him. So he decides who to use anywhere in the kingdom. Do you understand, child of God? So that's why he said, abide by your calling. Don't, don't convert what is not ultimately yours when you have not even used what he called you to do. You must find your purpose. Because you are useless in the kingdom when you don't find the, what God wants to use you. Let me bless you with this one. I was in conversation with mom this, this afternoon and we were sharing and I was sharing with her that John the Baptist, the fetus in the womb, recognized Jesus' spirit in the womb of Mary. The Bible says Elizabeth said as, as soon as I heard the salutation of the mother of my Lord, the child in me leaped for joy. And I said, those guys, but spiritually, they recognize each other, but they were physically, biologically, they are cousins. They were cousins. But John still needed <laughs> the Holy Ghost to tell him who the Messiah is, but he knew him in the spirit. They knew each other in the spirit. So when they both came out, they now need them. that part of them was shut down. Permit me to use the right word. I don't want to use the word shut down, was closed up and it will require ascension. It will require spiritual responsibility that is called rituals to be able to assess the information that their respective spirit already know. And I said to mom, your spirit already knows everything about you. So John and Jesus had a spiritual communication and they know each other by communication of the spirit. But when they came into the physical body, they need now to begin to ascend to find out what their spirit knows. That's why the Bible says secret thing belongs to the Lord our God. The one he revealed to us, they are for us and for our children. And I say, the, one of the reasons why the Ecclesia seems to be suffering so many things is because certain knowledge that God has made available to certain people, they kept it from us most probably. If they have made it so plain, Maybe we will not need to go and be searching for them again. Or many of us are so irresponsible to go after those knowledge which are already in books, in tapes, in Bible study, in school of revelation, in Sunday services, but we are not ready to search for them. So when we come to the physical realm, 
we need to reconnect our spirit to be able to assess everything our spirit already knows and that is done through rituals praise god hallelujah i love what first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 says in esv version he said to each is given the manifestation of the holy spirit for the common good so whatever grace whatever gift of god activity of god manifestation of god through the angelic ministry that is called grace is manifesting through you it's not for it it is for the good of all of us it is for the common good i am your father i am your pastor i am your mentor whatever god has anointed me i am your prophet for the common good we are working for one organization it is called the kingdom of god that's why you need to understand the power of unity in love for a brother or for a sister the moment love is wanting in all that you do you are disqualified your your service must be based on love your giving must be based on love your prayer must be based on love whatever you do you do it in love if it is not in love, it is unacceptable. Say with me, if it is not in love, it is unacceptable. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Skarana Sokrike. You must love by force, by fire. You must love. Ikaroba diha. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love. You can't say you are a child of God when you can't love. Because he that is born of love is love. God is love. He that loveth not is not of God, for God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and anyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. The meaning of that is, if you are walking in love, you are a child of God, and you know God, if you eat that loveth not, knoweth not God. You don't know him. You don't know him with malice. You don't know him with anger. You don't know him with unforgiveness. You don't know him. You don't know him by shutting up your bowel of compassion. You don't know God by gossip. You don't know him for God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. God commended his love towards us. While we are yet in Christ died for your good. God is love. Are you love? <sighs> if you have the spirit of God, then you have the three dimensions summary of the operations of God. Love, power, and sound mind. If you cannot operate in the power of God, there's a problem. If you cannot operate in the wisdom of God, there's a problem. But the foundation is love. I have not seen, ears have not heard. It has never crossed the heart of me. Things God has kept for they who love him. Some people think that they know they love God. Ooh, how can you say that you love God when you see your brother that you hate? Ah, you, the love of God is not in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Fill me with love, O oh God. More of your love, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you read the first section of it, 4 from verse 11 to verse 13, you read powerful revelation of the whole essence of why Jesus gave graces, ministry graces, in the fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. And when you read, you realize there are five major reasons why God gave the governmental administrative gift, gift of the Son. I already taught you about spiritual gift, they are in three dimensions. We have the gift of the Father, you have the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then you have the gift of the Son of God. And all of these three gifts are manifested through the office of the Holy Ghost. The five things we see in Ephesians chapter number four that Jesus, through Apostle Paul, made known unto us, and he gave some apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the same, the works of the ministry and the fine of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about every, with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men that cunningly craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the end even christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part 
make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Okay, let me read it, verse 13 for you before I break it down in TLB version, the New Living Bible. Why is it that he gives us these special abilities? And that special ability is because of the assistance of the angels to do certain things best. So when you have grace, special ability, assistance of angels, you will do things best. It is that God's people will be equipped to do better works for him, building up the church, the body of Christ, to a position of strength and maturity. Yesterday, we differentiated between spiritual babies and spiritual maturity. Do you remember? And now, let's break this down. You will realize, number one, this Jesus gave us this key when he left captivity captive for the perfecting of the saint. For the perfecting of the saint. When you go down and you see it, unto a perfect man, fully grown up in God, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He's still talking about spiritual maturity. So a, a saint is made perfect when they get to a point of spiritual maturity. And one of the factors that perfect us in Christ is persecution. Trials of faith. God, after he has allowed you to be suffer a while, we strengthen, establish, perfect, and settle you. So they that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And the captain of our salvation is also made perfect through suffering. Woo! If we suffer with him, we reign with him. When you suffer for righteousness, sake, happy are you, rejoice. Because that's how all the prophets of old also were persecuted for righteousness. Sake. Okay, number two, for the work of the ministry. So fivefold ministry gifts are given for the work of ministry. Number three, what is the ministry? Let me let me let me break that down. Ministry is identification of how Jesus has chosen to walk through you in this realm, whether in politics, whether in career, whether in business, whether as a fivefold ministry gift, and as a woman, every woman is called into a ministry because marriage is a ministry, and that's why you can't afford to marry an idiot, and you can't allow to give yourself to a fool. You must let God choose who to marry for you. Otherwise, you cry like every other person is crying. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number three, edification of the body of Christ. The reason why God placed me over you is so that you will be able to contribute your own quota by the hand of God for the expansion, the growth, and the edification of the body of Christ. So whatever you are doing that does not contribute to the growth of the ecclesia, that does not glorify God, that does not edify the body of Christ, the church of Jesus globally as it is called, even though the real name for us is the ecclesia, a governmental system. So whatever you do that is not doing that, then it's not of God. You are not doing it by the Holy Ghost because the whole essence of the Holy Ghost is to glorify Jesus. Glory to God. Number four, until we all come in the unity of the faith. There are faith, but there is a faith. We are in the faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Unity of the faith. Unity of the faith. What is faith? Faith is the capacity to receive the word of God, the promises of God established by the new covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ, transpose it into a motion picture in your heart, in your subconscious, in your conscious mind, send it to your subconscious mind by believing it, receiving it, and connecting the emotion of it coming to pass in reality in your heart. As soon as that is done, it's counted unto you for righteousness. That's faith. Righteous faith, there's a, a, a righteous faith that is called iniquity. Glory to God. So until we all come to the unity of the faith, meaning we are all united in the will of God. We are able to discern what God is doing through Emmanuel, what God is doing through Josephine, what God is doing through Persuade, what God is doing through Sefiso. We are able to discern and we are united in accomplishing it for the unity of the faith. I know whom God has said, and I cannot work against my brother or sister because we are working for one organization, God's kingdom. God's kingdom. Two days ago, I taught you the eight litmus tests to know anyone that has received ministry from God. You need to go back to that revelation and you'll be able to understand till we all come to the unity of the faith. Number five, reason why God gave us the fivefold ministry, gave the unity of the knowledge.
knowledge of the Son of God. Mark the word unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. We all must know Jesus the same way, but he is manifest the different dimension of him through the different ministry gift that he has given to us. And I explained that to you. How do you know when the man is truly called by God? Check out for the emphasis of a dimension of Jesus that is called his gospel. When you listen to when you listen to Billy Graham in his days, is Jesus is the savior. When you listen to Kennedy again in his day, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. When you listen to John Wesley, Jesus is our perfection. When you listen to 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 Bishop Waliuki, Jesus is the Savior. No, everybody has a dimension of Jesus that they are proclaiming. Tell us from, we tell you that Jesus is the healer. Hallelujah to Jesus. Akaradosika, you get the message. Praise God. So when you study this, you realize that these are the five major assignments corporately of the fivefold ministry. There are some grandchildren there. What is it? That we ask for no longer be children. Why? We must move on to perfection. We must be mature by the fivefold. And he says something in verse 15. But speaking the truth. Somebody say when they say speaking the truth. How do you know that somebody is maturing or has matured? You know them by speaking the truth. The devil is a liar and the father of it. The minutest lie you lie automatically makes you a child of the devil. You can't be of God and be a liar. The Bible says in him is no lie nor darkness at all. At all. If you are a liar by any means, you don't belong to God. Speaking the truth, but that truth, you are speaking it in our definition that is called in love. May grow up unto him in all things. You see, he's our model, which is the head of even Christ. The evidence of your spiritual maturity is love. Say it louder, say it with me. The evidence of my spiritual maturity is love. <laughs> <laughs> Unity in love, speaking the truth in love. Ah, la zokeria, verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and combated by which every joint supply. You have a responsibility. You are not working for yourself. We are working together to achieve the goal of our Father for the kingdom of God to be established on earth and the devil to be subdued according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto a define of itself again in love. In love. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you should notice that the Father made Jesus the head. He was made the head of the church. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Sakuriya Bahata, La Seko Frida and the Sokrogati Asa. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to your name. So the Father has subjected everything under the control of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 27 and 28. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which is accepted, which they put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued to him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I was asking a question for somebody today, and I think I need to come and do a comprehensive teaching on that. On their question is Jesus God? Why is Jesus not God? How is Jesus God? I don't want to go into that details, but just know that Jesus is not the Father. But he manifested the Father. And that's why the fullness of the Father was in him. He is the Son of God. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the same Word of God that was in heaven, that came down, was sent by the Father. Woo! Check the catalog, clarification of the difference between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, stop arguing. Jesus came in the flesh. He was 100% man. Even now, he's still a man. The Bible, the Bible says there is one mediator between God and man, 
the man Christ Jesus. That's why he's called the second man. Jesus was a man, is a man. We continue to be a man created in the image and the likeness of God. But before he became a man, he was never a man because John 1 told us in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Ah! Who is the word of God? God himself. Oh, and he said in verse 14, and the word was made flesh. Ah! God sent his only begotten son in the sinful flesh. Jesus was never in the sinful flesh. But he was existing, but not with the name Jesus. In that the name Jesus is the name given to encapsulate the word of God. Since he's coming, I'm sharing with you. So, so that we can put this thing to rest. Jesus was a man, he is a man, and we continue to be a man. Because we are his generation and we are all man. Men created in the image and the likeness of God. But a different kind of man, perfect man in the eyes of God. If you need more an insight about that man, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who was manifest? God. That's why the mystery of Trinity, even though the word Trinity you will not find in the scripture, is a mystery to those who want to look at things from the physical point of view. But Jesus was 100% man that depended on the grace of God so that he can be the propitiation of our sins and get back the dominion of this world for man and he got it and now he gave back in his own image and likeness which is the image and likeness of god so jesus is not the father but he manifested the father that's why isaiah named it the wonderful the counsel of the everlasting god the everlasting father and jesus continually pointed us to the father Telling you that he is not the father, but son of the father, but he and the father are one because he does the will of the father. And nevertheless, he said in John chapter 17, glorify me with the glory that I have had with you from the beginning, which tells you he was not here before he only came here to do work for God. Just like you are not here, you are sent to come and do the work of God. He said, as the father sent me, even so sent I you. In Jesus is not a man then my gospel is a lie jesus is a man was a man we continue to be a man but he's one with god that's why you and jesus are joint ears with him for the inheritance of the father i know some of you want to begin to rest with that let's deal with the issue of today i think wise men has already caught that great is the mystery of god in it it is given to us to understand the mystery well, to the outsider, it's not given unto them. Jesus and the Father are one, but they are not the same. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ, is the Spirit of the Father, is also your spirit. That makes you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, though he was found in the form of man, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself equal with God, and that's why they killed him. And he said, you must do the same thing. Glory to God, have that same mentality. Until, that's what makes you a son of God. That's what makes you a spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus is the commander of the ecclesia. That's why the greatest job of the Antichrist is to prove to you that Jesus did not come in the flesh. And the reason for the communion ritual is to continually prove to the world that Jesus came in the flesh. The reason why he had to be hung on the cross is so that the whole world can see that he was actually truly a man who lived and died, but by the power and the glory of God resurrected. Glory to God, I don't want to go there anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus, but somebody needed to hear that. Revelation chapter one, verse, verse chapter two, verse one. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, this thing said he that ordered the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Revelation 1 2 explains the seven gold, golden can, candlesticks and um, seven stars. The mystery, you see again, the things that we speak, they are mysteries that was hid since the foundation of the world, but the Holy Ghost is the one speaking it through us. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. When we talk about mysteries, you don't understand mystery by natural understanding. You understand mystery by the Holy Ghost. They are spiritually designed. Mystery is the language of the spirit. 
That's why somebody can read the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, the book of Revelation, and the entire scripture, and get degree in theology and may not have life there. Because mystery are understood by the Spirit. Revelation 1.20 declare that this is the mystery of the seven golden stars, of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, and the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest, are the seven churches in Asia. So Jesus is saying to you, I'm the one that appoint the angels that ensure the ministry, the purpose of the church is established. And that particular principal angel works with the pastor of that church. So you see, it's not about the man. It's about what God has anointed him to do. If God has anointed you to plant a church, or to erect a system for God or a business or to be relocated to a particular location and in your small mind you think you can do otherwise then you will be supplying things for yourself but when you are in the center of the will of God there are angels that are working with you praise God that's why I said when you take responsibility to get qualified additional qualification as commanded by God you have only go scholarship thank you Jesus praise God <laughs> I want you to know today that hear me very well. Because Jesus is the commander in chief of the estate of God, he appoints and fires. He hires and fires. And this is a serious matter I want to discuss today. So, from this place, from this junction, if you are listening before, listen with two ears now. Jesus appoints, he hires and fires. We are all the employee of God. Everyone in Christ is an employee of God. Then how are you serving the purpose of your father? Let's have a discussion. In Luke 13 verse 6 to 9, you see, he spake also a parable. A certain man had fig tree planted in his vineyard and came and sought fruit thereon. Man the word, he came to seek fruit and found none. Child of God, the measure of grace that has been given to you, the spiritual capacity, enablement, the gift of God, the calling, the purpose of your existence that has been given to you, whether you, are, you know it now or not, is given to you for profiting, for profiting. For the gift of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with that. And what is the profit? God's glory, God's kingdom expansion, body of Christ edification. Are you profitable to the kingdom? Anyone in an employment that is not adding value to the organization is subject to be fired. Is that correct? Talk to me quickly, child. Yes. And anyone that is productive is subject to promotion. Is that correct? That is why many lives of many Christians are stagnant. The only thing they need God for is Father, pray, water, miracle. Give me. No, you got it wrong. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen it. When your priority is to become productive for the Father, you will never need to pray for some of the things you are praying for. He says, seek ye first the kingdom and God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? The will of the Father, the vision of the Father, communicated to your spirit, downloaded to the physical realm through the protocols of faith, and you take corresponding actions of faith to bring it to pass. All other things that you've been praying for shall be added. You will never need to pray for them. They shall be added. They are reward of fruitfulness. They are reward of productivity. As you can put your house in order, you will die. God, I still have more product of praise, more product of worship. He said 15 more years for your productivity. You see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? The centurion was wise enough to know that he won't allow the productive servant who was sick to remain sick. He had to send for Jesus. If that servant was useless, he would have allowed him to even die. Do you think when you are productive, death can come to you? Do you think when you are productive, sickness can abide with you? Check your life, child of God, and check where you are getting it wrong. In this ayah, are you productive? Do you relate to God only on bread and water? Or you relate to God based on destiny and purpose pursued? Everyone whose priority is the kingdom of God, expansion, glory coming to the Father. The Father and the entire commonwealth of God are backing him up. I am being backed up by the whole of heaven because I am committed to 
subdue in the devil and enforce the will of the Father on our 24 7 death, sickness, poverty, failure can never have a place with me. Karaba Superhata. Masi Kosofragi Abaha. Masi. But if you are not productive to the Father, if no glory is coming to the Father from you, if you are off course of destiny, you are subject to attacks. Let me tell you, child of God, every now and then we are being reckoning. We are being summoned for reckoning. We are being created. We are being valued. Our productivity level are being measured by God. God is not stupid, can never be. He puts us in his employment to bring him fruits. Are you fruitful? <laughs> I'm saying he came to find fruit, but he couldn't find any. Is your life fruitful? Verse 7, then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard. Behold, these three years I come seeking. God is very long suffering. Some of you is already 10 years for a fruitless life. The only time God hears from you is when you need a miracle. The only time you go to seek him is when you need, need a miracle, when you need healing. But when you don't have need of any of those things, God doesn't matter to you. You don't care about what he, he sent you here to do. You don't care about the gift that he has given to you. You don't care about his body. You don't care about his kingdom. And you want God to care about you. Does that even make sense to you? Does that even make sense to you? Does that even make sense to you? It is only in his loving mercy that he gives you some crumbs. The real bread you don't have because you are unproductive. God only hears your name when you need a miracle. But when there is a, when there is a need for intercessors, you are not there. When there is a need to give, when oh, you don't know that he gave you that job for his kingdom, he gave you those children for his glory, he gave you everything as ever given you because of his will, not because of you. He said, he ask, you receive not because he asked that means to consume upon your loss. You don't care what you're asking. How does it benefit God? You think you are here for yourself? No. No man live for himself. The Bible says, whatsoever we do, whether we eat or we drink, we do unto the Lord. You are in God's employment, child of Everyone that is in Christ are employee of God and we all have been given certain graces to function in the area that Jesus wants to function through us by the instrumentality of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 7, then came he unto the dresser of the vineyard. Okay, verse 8, and answering, and Lord, these three years I come seeking fruit of this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it in the ground? You see, in our work with God, there are things that are angels God has mandated to make sure we are healthy, to make sure we have supplies, to make sure we get promoted, to make sure we get job, to make sure we get opportunity. And all of those things that God is creating for us, he does it for his own glory, so that we can contribute towards the expansion of the kingdom, those five things I showed you. So when God measures you, and he sees no reckoning from you, he says, cut it down, cut down the supply. Why are you investing into this vessel that is useless for me? These are realities. God is an employer and he's not going to compromise the codes of conduct for you. He's not. Oh my goodness, child of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying, child of God? Is somebody hearing me? If there be anybody that has ever deceived you, that you, you come to church, you make noise and praise God and shout, and that's all about God. No! You are in an employment. And the earlier you wake up to this, the better. That God expects fruits from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus Christ said, lay up treasure above. Lay it up above. And the, the dresser says, and the dresser in this regard can be your pastor. It can be your spiritual father. The spiritual authority over you. The dresser in this regard is from the office of the Holy Ghost. As he said unto the Lord, in mercy, Lord, let it alone this year. Give me another opportunity one more year till I shall dig around it. Let me minister to these people again. Let, let's feed them with the truth. Let's teach them about the, the meaning of fatherhood. Let's teach them about ascension again. Let's teach, try to re-disciple them again. Lord, after one year, look at what happened. And if it be a fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. I don't want to do what is a norm. I say, may you not be cut down in Jesus' name. No! <laughs> that's, that's just a psychological prayer. <laughs> I won't pray that kind of a prayer for you. 
My prayer is that may you wake up to your responsibility in Jesus' name. Let me see who we say amen. amen. May you wake up to your kingdom assignment in Jesus' name. May all the demon that has beclouded you, heading you for destruction, may they let you go now. May you be revived in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God seeks fruit from each one of us. These fruits are the end result of what he wants to achieve for the purpose he's using you for. The reason why he gave you grace, the reason why he gave you pastor, the reason why he gave you opportunity, the reason why he gave you that job, the reason why he created that business for you, it is because he is expecting fruit. When last did you pay tithe? You've been hearing the word of God in this ministry since forever. How much of your resources, how many prayers have been prayed for you? For you, How many times have you said thank you to the Lord? What have you given back? What fruit can God get from you? You can see an example in the fig tree. He expected to find fruit, and it, his leaf were green. Your leaf is so green, you've learned so much. How much of your resources has come back to God? What are the fruits that God is getting from you? Prayer, you don't want to pray. Fasting, you are not interested. Join department, you are not interested. You just want to continue to come and be hearing and hearing and do nothing. What does God get back in return of all the investment he gave to you? You are even running away from assignment and yet you are the best to listen to every word. You will not miss no service. But what are the fruit God is demanding from you? Join this department, you are not interested. Ah! I pray, mercy Lord. Ah, mercy, Lord, on this foolishness. Mercy is all I pray for this foolishness, Father. Give them one more year. Give them opportunity, Father. Don't strike them. You know the reason why the life of God is not seen in many people? This is it. This is it. Very simple. I gave my life for you. What have you given to me? You are the best that will come to church and lift up your holy name. That's why I play the, the, the William, William song for you. That I give myself away. What have you given away? What have you given away? You can't commit your time to God. You can't. You can't give your resources to God. You can't pray for others. What do? What are you useful for? <laughs> Jesus demonstrated for us how God behaves because He's the express image of God. With the fig tree, when you are supposed to be bearing fruit and you are not bearing fruit, you will be cut down. Heaven will cut off your supply. Heaven will. May God revive your spirit. May God give you understanding of what I'm sharing with you. In the, in the parable of, 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 the, of, of the five talents, you remember that those who, the, the one who had one talent that did not profit with it, it was taken away from him and was cast into outer darkness. You may not like to hear it. Some people may go to hell because of this. Because of this, you are so poor. Your account in heaven is so empty. Nothing is coming from God, from you to God. You have no treasure in heaven. You have no treasure. The Bible says of, of, of Cornelio, after Apostle chapter 10, thy prayers and thy arms, that's a productive. It has come as a memorial before the Lord. What is speaking for you before God? What is speaking for you before God? Personal devotion you don't have, let alone you'll be able to pray for others for five seconds. So what are you useful for in the kingdom of God? You don't know the purpose and the reason of your existence. You are the one that has the greatest problem. Problem never ceases in your life because you don't prioritize the kingdom. You can't prioritize the kingdom of God and you will be carrying burden all your life. No! Those who prioritize and favor his righteous cause, they say continually, the Lord be magnified. Who have pleasure in the prosperity? No one serve God and be poor. No one serve God and remain sick. No one serve God and remain in poverty. No one serve God and remain behind. You shall serve the Lord your God. He is your place. Righteousness exalt. Which God are you serving in 20 years that has kept you the way you are? You are not moving forward. You are not. You are stagnant. You have even gone backward. If you are not serving my God, you just hear about Him. You don't know Him. For the people that do know their God shall be strong and we do exploit. When we know God, we do exploit. We move from community to state to become global phenomenon. Many Christians are just talking about God. They heard about God, but they don't know Him. For the people that know Him, drunk and they do it. Stop deceiving yourself. It's time for you to walk with Him. It's time for you to know Him. It's time for you to know Him. When you know Him, you will serve Him. If they obey and serve Him, they 
he shall spend their days in pleasures and their years in prosperity. Come on! As a young believer, I walked around. The life of many so-called Christians was, was a disaster. Nothing so glorious to write about. You pass by a pub, be a parlor, you see the best of cars. You come to church, you, you see people who know the, the worst of cars you find in church. Not like it used to be, like it is now these days. No! I, I had to ask God a question. Why? I searched the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. I realized the reward of righteousness, holiness, justice is a great life. It's prosperity. It's abundant life. But I couldn't see it in the life of the people around me. Then I made up my mind I'll be different. Thank you, Jesus. Ha! All the demons that has been machinated against you to make your life a, a misery, to make you a disaster to the kingdom, to make you unproductive. I bind those devils now. I release your destiny. I release your help. I release you out of the imprisonment of life that foolishness has brought you, ignorance has brought you. I declare you liberated. I forbid those devils now. I command your light to begin to shine in the name of Jesus. Some of you don't know the reason why you are working where you are working is because God wants to save that boss. And every now and then the Holy Ghost witness to you. Give him a trust. Send him a text message. Share the link with him. You don't want when they sack you tomorrow don't say it's the devil it's not saying it's not the devil. it's god when you are unproductive he will cut you down <laughs> oh my goodness i've messed it tonight are you understanding me child of god are you understanding me we are all employees of the holy spirit within our respective destiny pursuits i want to sing this into your head today we are all employee we are all employed by jesus to achieve his will thank you jesus we are all working in partnership they went everywhere what preaching and the lord was walking with them he said my father walked in that one i walk now the lord is still working he's working with us when you do what he wants he will confirm it in your life many of you are potential fortune ten thousand not even five hundred but you are still an employee under a sinner because you will not do what you are employed to do by god that's why i told you if you're if if you are working with government or working under people you don't ever see those people as your boss. It's God. God is the one that employs you there. If you don't do that work for God, you will remain an employee for life under slavery. But when you are conscious that God is the one that employs you for his own glory, so it will, it will determine, it will change the way you pray over that organization. It will change the way you see that organization because you see yourself as a missionary of Christ. <laughs> Satan racist men and put them as agents in all sectors why do you think god sent me and the man he sent is to raise you to become an agent of god you are supposed to be the one overturning all the works of the devil in that organization but you don't know why you are there the child of the devil an agent of the devil is there even frustrating you you couldn't even shine your light what kind of a son are you what kind of a daughter are you prayer you can't pray but the, the children of the devil that are there casting spell every day but you are there even their spell is working on you what kind of a christian are you you can't fast to change the things in, in that organization to enthrone jesus in that organization the children of the devil are busy fasting and cursing and casting spell and their spell made them to fire you what kind of a christian are you what kind of a christian are you i pray mercy over you today and i pray you will wake up from your slumber and begin to serve the purpose of god and see yourself the way we see you in the spirit you are there as an agent of righteousness but you are the same one that will join them to walk in the counsel of the own god when a bill is passed what do you do do you go on your knees and cancel it you just accept it just like that <laughs> a new law is passed daniel will not bend he will not bend he changed the law on his news you can change the law of the organization on your news be like Daniel. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Ah. Everything you are and will ever be belong to God and must be used for his glory and his glory alone. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 9, 36 to 38. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few, a few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth laborers into the harvest. God is ever seeking more laborers. And the you he has, you are unproductive. God demands pro profit and productivity 
with our lives every day. Every day. As I was moving around in the town today, I have this passion. Lord, we need to get more young people. We need to get more teenagers. We need to get more people below the age of five. We need to in, we need to program Jesus into the heart of these children. We need to get them young. We need to get them young. We have work to do, children. We have work to do. You can't be living like this, looking for miracle every day. You will never be able to do what God called you, called you to. God need people in, in policies, in children's schools. God need more people to occupy more places. And overthrow the devil. John 15, 4 to 6. Abide in me and I, I in you, and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. <laughs> no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and in him, I in him, the same brings forth much fruits. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he, he is cast forth as a branch. Can you see it again? And is withered. And men gather in them and cast them into fire, and they are burnt. Suffering continues. And you may end up in hell if you continue your life like this. It's better you wake up and, and remain connected to Jesus, receiving from him and doing what he says. Fast, pray, wait upon him, pray in tongues, study the scripture, meditate, worship, do the rituals. That's how to happen. And that's how you become productive and fruitful. And that's how you begin to upgrade your life. That's how your life will begin to upgrade. That's how you begin to upgrade yourself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. God doesn't condone laziness. God does not condone laziness in his employment. <laughs> John 15 verse 8. And hearing is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Can you see? All that God is looking for is fruitfulness. And what are the fruitfulness? His will be done as he desire through you. So shall ye be my disciples indeed. When you bear fruit, he prospers you. The Bible says the, the branch that bear fruit, he purges, he prunes, so that he can bear more fruit. That's why your life will be glorious when God is getting glory through you. When your destiny, your life is giving glory to God. But when you are busy arguing with your husband every day, you are busy cursing your children every night, how does that glorify God? <laughs> how does it glorify God? You go late to work every day, you are unproductive, the work that is given to you, you are not doing, you are not committed, you are not faithful. How does that glorify God? I know this is government work. You don't sweat on government work. How does that glorify God? Because you think government is the one that employs you. Let government continue to sustain you. But when you know it is God that employed you, wherever you are working, you will serve God and you will be up. You've been there 20 years. What can you show for it? What can you show for it? Why you are in that government business that you call government business, but you have the mentality that it's of God? Things will be different for you because your case is different. First Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. We are what we are only by grace. It is grace that makes us who we are. Praise God. And First Thessalonians 1, 13, say, 1, 3 says, What we do, we, we labor in love, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Hebrews 6.10, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. What you are doing, are you doing it out of love for God? Don't serve God on contract. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. I sent a scripture this morning to my children uh, on, on WhatsApp, the, the members of prayer squad, the prayer champion unit. I, I sent them a scripture of blessedness. And I was sharing with them the mind of God. That many people would use, you serve God on contract. And he said, because you have not served the Lord, you'll go with joy and gladness. Then you will serve your enemy. Don't, don't give God conditions for serving. Just serve him out of love. Knowing who your father is, it, you, you no man go to battle at his own charge. <laughs> Let me bless you with that same scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 to 48. Because thou servest not thy God, the Lord thy God, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou serve your enemies which the Lord sent against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Can you see that? Hunger, thirst, nakedness. You are forever alone because you are not serving God with joy. You are not serving God with gladness. You are giving God condition. The work of God has become a problem for you. You are too busy to do the will of God because of the same job God gave you, because of the same children God gave you, because of the same husband God gave you. <laughs> you see why some people cannot be blessed more than they are? <laughs> And he said, until thou be destroyed. And I said to them, can you see that it is not the death that is against them? You remember the people of the days of Agai? Because they will not build the house of God. God said, I cut all in their pocket. Not the devil. Not the devil. God 
May wisdom be released unto you. Say it loudly. All right, let me do quick on this one. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together. Can you see? We are employees. It's our father's business. It's our, it's our father's. <laughs> Look, praise God. Let, let, me, let me share this with you. I have a one of my sons in, in one of my sons in ministry um, to those days. There was a particular time I remember them having a financial challenge. And do you know, almost every month I was paying the salary of this man of God. And I was determined to continue to do it until the Holy Ghost tells me to stop. Why? He's doing my father's business. He's my brother. Even though I'm a father over him. <laughs> It's, it's our father's business. He's got family. I must, I do it with joy and love. That's what I'm telling you about. That's powerful, blessed man of God. I raise him. Children of God, walk in love. Walk in love. How can you say you love God when you see your brother in need and you shut up your power of compassion? How do I let the love of God in you? I could sit back and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a spiritual father. Do you know in this ministry, Jesus Global Ecclesia, there are people <laughs> we send money to knowing their certain <laughs> conditions. Zakre Frenikos. You you think it's just online thing? No! This is the work of God! This is we were giving an update recently of how much that has gone into history from your contribution without even mentioning what has come from us. There are certain individuals in this ministry that can testify of this to you, that I'm a man of love. <laughs> I, I live for love. So there's nothing that makes you a Christian outside love. And it's not love of mouth, it's love of Christ I'm talking about. I can't, I can't look away from children begging in the streets. I will have to have something to give them. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. So in God's employment, willingness is not negotiable. You must be willing. You don't serve God with frown face. You don't serve God. How can I place this? You don't serve God as if it's a burden. Do it with gladness and joy. Whatever you do that lacks joy and gladness is, is a waste. It's a corrupted seed. It will yield no result. Uh -huh. If we don't pay tight now, that man, he, he will say, hey, why haven't you paid tight? Why haven't, uh, you are even blessed that they can ask you why. In your small mind, you think they are asking you because they lack? No, they are asking so that your life can be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, everybody. I, I'm saying this with all humility. I'm not ministering to you because of what you will give me. I'm blessed. Uh, and you know I am blessed. Before you came, I am blessed. Why you are here, I am blessed. If you decide to leave, I'm still blessed. <laughs> because I am doing the perfect will of God. And he's blessing me. So when you bless me, you are blessed. Because you will tap into the grace. Because it's not me you are blessing. You are blessing him that sent me. And he will bless you because you are contributing your quota to his work. Simple. But what I'm saying to you right now is that change your mind about serving God. Don't serve God in a stupid way. It is a waste of life. <laughs> the reason why many people, many people's life does not glorify God. Is because they are not willing in obedience. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. To fear God and do his commandment is the whole duty of man. Obeying the commandment of God without joy, without willingness, is a waste. He said, The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Serve the Lord with gladness. Worship him in joy. Give to the Lord in joy. Ah, honor him in joy. Do your work in joy. Every time complaining, it's, it's, a, it's a turn off for God. Wherever more money is, more money. It's a turn off for God. And never compare yourself to others who are not doing what God employed them to do. Do your part. If you see their job, want it, take it. It's your father's work. Oh my goodness. I don't know how to say this to you. It is your father's work. Oh, Shakrena Namazoke Tiasada. <laughs> Matthew 21, verse 28 to 31. Jesus told us a story of two sons. Of which their father said, Who goes to my farm today? And the other one said, I will go, but he never went. But the one that said he wouldn't go, he had a second thought and he went. Jesus Christ said, Who has done the will of the Father? The one that went. Don't ever, don't ever allow the work of God to lie fallow. Come on, come on. We made a honest advertisement to be a blessing to Israel. You are folding your hand. <laughs> God, I was sick. Hey, my mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. What you should know is that God will. Finance is job, is work, with or without you. For your involvement is, a, is an opportunity for you to be blessed. And how much is even the tithe you are making noise about? 
how much is the offering you are holding back? <laughs> Was the man of God not feeding before you came? <laughs> and since you have not even given, has he died? Is he not even looking more robust than you? <laughs> Who is suffering? Whose business is not working? Whose life is not working? Whose marriage is not working? Whose children are not... You should think you are serving God grudgingly. Zale, lavazofri, nahandala. Stop negotiating with God. Prioritize it. Come on, say, I hear. Thank you, Jesus. Always seek to do more for God. Say with me, always seek to do more. Not to reduce. I don't understand the kind of Christianity we have. Say, Lucy, I, I, I think I'm doing too much. I want, ah! <laughs> so, and you want God to do exceeding abundantly about for you. Do you even know what you are talking about? Look, Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 28, he said, if you don't understand this, he prayed that you will understand this. I press forward for the mark, for the price of the high calling of God that I may obtain the price. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, continue. Don't seek to reduce your service to God. Don't seek to reduce your giving. Don't seek to reduce your prayer. Don't seek to reduce. Seek for opportunity to do more for God. Go! Zakaria Tata. Zakaria was sick. You know the meaning of that? The demons that has clogged your mind, that wants to destroy your life, they are the one I'm attacking now. Let them leave you alone forever. In the name of Jesus, all movable, all movable, all movable, all movable, all movable. You are so movable. They comparing themselves with themselves are not why they are stupid. That's what the Bible says. And you see, sister, sister, sister Janet, sister Remy, sister this, brother this, they are not doing this, they are not. How is that your business? You do, do it and do their own joy. So collect their blessing. What's the problem? All movable. Don't be moved by what other people are not doing. Be unmovable. Let God see your passion for Him. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Never ever seek to reduce your service to God. Every opportunity you can do more for God, do it with all your might. And let's see who get blessed. Ah, may a revival come to your spirit. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He says to you, Whatever you do for God is not in vain. You will be rewarded. Thank you, Jesus. Read Matthew 20. You will see Jesus giving a parable of how he hires people and paid them. And those who are hired at the last hour, they were also paid equal. He decided what to pay you. And he said the reason is because the first shall be the last. You may be the, in the eye of others, the weakest in this ministry or wherever you are serving the Lord. But your life will be the most glorious because of your faithful heart. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. You may be the one that comes last to that department, to that group, but you are the one that is giving your best. The first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. Let me give you one of the keys of my rising in Christ. One of my keys that I never compare myself with anybody, and I don't care who doesn't do the word of God, work of God, I will do it with my life. Follow my example. Thank you, Jesus. What am I saying to you tonight? Serve God with joy. Serve God with excitement. When when God sees your heart, he will provoke others to jealousy through you. When he trusts you and you are playing with him, he will exchange you with someone that is, he will make better than you. God is giving you an opportunity, you are playing with it. God will exchange you. You see, God is an employer and he will not compromise the standard of a successful organization for you. Ah, he's a merciful God. Yes, he is. But when it comes to his work, he follows principle. He follows principle to the letter. Don't joke with God. He is the lion as well as okay <laughs> let us be serious and be dedicated with every opportunity that god gives to us and we must maximize them whether it is convenient or it is not convenient 100 days fasting and dominion is coming some of you are already planning how not to attend nobody will plead for you when you see the result in the life of those who are part of it next time if you still have such opportunity you will know what to do but by mercy i encourage you be responsible. First Corinthians 3, verse 5. Who then is Paul? Who then is Apollo? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. God has given you something that you can use to contribute for the edification of the body of Christ. That's what I'm saying to you. What are you contributing? You've been in Jesus' global ecclesia for two months, for three months, for five months, for six months. Where do you belong? Which department are you functioning? What are you contributing? Are you, is everything okay? 
and you are comfortable. We have baptized the public. You don't want to be in any. He said, I just want to be a YouTuber. I just want to remain quiet online. Ah! When miracle is quiet in your life, who do you blame now? <laughs> Offering, you are not giving. Commitment, you are not giving. But you are receiving. How does that work? <laughs> and that man is anointed, though. Ah, I was blessed. Every message is blessed, 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 blessed. Bless. Prayer, you are not part of. Even if you don't have money, don't you have mouth that you can pray? Join the prayer band. <laughs> And that's why you see sometimes when we make announcements, you say, don't join by excitement because it won't last. <laughs> hey. They give you a little assignment, you can't be consistent. After two weeks, you, have, you are tired. We can't see you anymore. What kind of a son are you? Where you are working, if your boss gave you an assignment, many of you don't understand the way God operates. God does not pay in dollars and in pounds. God pays in grace. God pays in the blessing. And because you are not conscious that you are being blessed, you are being rewarded, you do the work of God anyhow. When you have opportunity to serve in the house of God, no matter how simple, no matter how simple you think the duty is, give it your best. When you are blessed by God, it will reflect in your life. Child of God, nothing is done for God without payment. But God doesn't pay in human currency. He pays in his own currency and manifests in human currency. Do you understand? If you understand, say, I do. Thank you, Jesus. So I encourage you, let's serve God with joy. Let's seek for more opportunity to serve Him. Let's seek for more opportunity. In verse 6, 1 Corinthians 3, He said, I have planted Apollo waters, God given this increase. So then neither is He that planted anything, neither is He that watered it. Because we are all working for God. Are you here now? He said in verse 4, verse 8, Everyone does what God has given him to do and will be rewarded according to his labor. According to his own labor. Verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. God! is the owner of the organization, the kingdom of God, and we have been employed for the expansion, establishment of the will of God on earth. Everything you do for God, you are rewarded. Whatever capacity you are serving Him. And that's why you must seek to increase your service so that your blessing can increase. Thou shalt serve, He shall bless. God pays blessing for service. And many of you are looking for blessing that you have been rewarded in service. Because you don't serve God, there is no place. Thank you, Jesus. We are laborers together with God. That's what the Bible says. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So let us impress God with our service of love. Those who truly love Him, they don't need appeal to serve Him. Favor, they favor His righteousness. They seek and foster His will by all means. The Bible says God is seeking true worshippers, prayer champion, givers, more laborers, children minister, youth minister, women minister. Where do you belong? The Bible says in the great house. In the house of God, there are vessels of, there are so many things to do. The harvest is plenteous. Labor as a fool. Why don't you make your labor available? Listen, child of God, as I begin to close, there is no one indispensable in the house of God. If you are not productive, God will fire you. And you don't want to hear what I want to say next, but I will say it. In this firing, it means your grace will be withdrawn from you. And because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, now, when God takes the gift away from you, gives it to your neighbor, you have no reason to live anymore. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when the kingdom was taken from Saul, granted to David, Saul had to leave the same. There can be two kings at the same time. When you mess up with God, he will leave you off and seek for himself a better vessel to use. Hear what I just said. When you are not producing your organization, don't they send out adverts to replace you? They fire you and replace you. God fire Saul. And saw the Bible says he sought, he advertised in the spirit and searched to find the most qualified, and he found David. And he said, The prophet, there, I have found. May God find you faithful in the powerful name of Jesus. Ezekiel 22 30. I saw for a man. God is always seeking for a man. I saw who was God seeking. I am seeking a man that will stand in the gap. My brothers and sisters, seek for opportunity to serve God. Stop running away from blessing. First Samuel 13, 14. After the apostle 13, 22. I have found David. That means God was searching. I have found. I have found. You need to tell God to stop searching that I am here. I have said from the Asaka. You know the qualification God is looking for? Your heart. He's looking for a contrite heart. The heart that is ready to do his will. That's your greatest qualification. That is the greatest qualification. Many are seeking help from God. But they deny to serve him with their life and the gift and the grace and the opportunities God has given to them. Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessing. Are you faithful? So why are you looking for blessing? The reason why you cry every day and you no ascension, nothing to what, what are you going to do in ascension? You only go to ascension to cry. 
Those who are saying they are saying to know his will to do, think it yourself. Judge it yourself. Is it right for God to bless you when you are unproductive to him? Is it right? Jesus Christ said, any price that does not bear fruit will be cut down. You can't change the scripture. Judge it yourself. He said, promotion does not come from the east nor from the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. That's not what the Bible says. He said, God is the judge. God doesn't promote anyone he has not approved. That's why you have been stagnant in your position. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, God made Isaiah to ascend. He saw God on his throne. And in the council of heaven, they want to get things done on earth. And God said, who shall I send? God is always seeking for who to send. Who shall I send to the children of this generation? Who shall I send to the financial sector? Who shall I send to the university? Everywhere you find yourself, you are sent there by God. We are never God create opportunity for you. But mind you not every opportunity is of God. And when I said everywhere you find yourself, means everywhere God has set you up in. So you should test all spirit and know which one is of God. But we are never God has positioned you. You are there to do His will. Who shall I send? Isaiah said, here I am. Send, send me one of the unique things we can remember about our mother in the faith, Catherine Kulma, is that she stepped into a higher dimension of the Holy Ghost because she said, Lord, if you can use anything, use to the world, I'm useless. I have lost my marriage. I've lost this. I've lost that. In fact, in some Christian circle, they will call me a sinner. But Lord, if you can use anything, use me. And she, God, this, God saw the heart. She has the right heart. Do you have the right heart? God has put you under a spiritual authority that you are not submissive to. That's, that's, it means you are not submissive to God. In this ministry, under the authority of Jesus Christ, I am privileged to be the father in the house. And you should trust me enough to give you direction by God because if the Lord is your shepherd and brought that shepherdhood under this grace, then trust the Lord for leadership. Trust the leadership in the house and you will never go wrong. When I advise, when we counsel you, know that the Lord has spoken. When we give you instruction, know that the Lord has spoken to you. Praise God. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 1 verse 6, A son honored the father, a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? How do you honor your father? You obey. You do what your father says. If I am your father, you do what I tell you. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Respect, says the Lord of hosts. Prioritize his will. All other things shall be added. Be fruitful and your life will flourish. <laughs> your righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They that be planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. They will still bring forth fruit. You see it in old age. Whatsoever you do it shall prosper. And I'm speaking about you. Serve yourself into divine health. Serve yourself into prosperity. Serve yourself into greatness. You have all the opportunity of a lifetime to serve God. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. Let me give you one secret. Proverbs is 16 verse 7. When a man's way please God, no devil, every devil will be at peace with him. <laughs> you can't change that scriptures, and the scripture cannot be broken. When your way please God, Satan will be on leave in your life. Those who know God, Jesus met Paul on the road to Mayhouse. The, the next question he asks is, what will thou have me do, Lord? Those are the people that know God. Every now and then in your devotion, you are saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? Money come into your account. What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do, Lord? I have one hour to pray. What do you want me to pray about, Lord? That is your life. Now, as you do that, your life will flourish in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that the Lord will revive your soul. He will revive your spirit today. Let me close with this testimony. As I was driving out of the house in the morning, one of my daughter's names was dropped in my spirit. And the Holy Ghost said, invite her to join the, 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 the personal prayer force. And I sent her a text message. And after some minutes, I saw a reply from her. She said, Daddy, I saw the advert. And I don't want to jump at it. I just felt, and I said to the Lord, Lord, I will wait for the apostle to send me a personal invitation and that will be the confirmation that you want me to join. And I smiled, I said, got you, got you, catch you. And we both smiled together. That is, that is how you know that I didn't put myself here. <laughs> I didn't choose to do what I'm doing. I'm saved, I am saved. May God bless you. May God revive your spirit. I have delivered the word of God to you. I've led you to pray that the Lord will revive you, repent, and commit your life to serve God in truth and in, and in, and in spirit. Maximize your life in service to God. Never ever compare yourself in service. I want you to go crazy in service to God. In all ramifications, the reason you live is to serve Him. 